Let's turn off the light for a second. See what it looks like. Hi, want to be my lab partner? door is completely off the shelter. You can see that it used to run along these two tracks on the side here. There's one, there's the other one. Right here. So that was what supported the front half. And these are the rollers that it ran on. This side has one roller and one hole where there was a roller. On this side over here, it's it still has both rollers. But if you look closely, all that's really left is the bearing race where the balls would have ran. The bearings would have been a much larger diameter like that. And they had to clearance the wood to fit the bearing. The back half doesn't have rollers. You can see where this roller here would have rolled on this piece of C-channel. Still has a little bit of a track left. And the, and the other roller would have ran on that one. So that supported this half of the door. You can also see that they had to clearance these grooves on either side to accommodate the C channel. This is the handle that you would have used to close it when you're inside. So you'd have reached up, grabbed that handle, pulled the door shut, that you'd be sealed down inside here. Looks like there's a free toilet seat down there. As you can see the back bolts have been cut short so they can clear as they roll open. And then the, the front ones have not. So the door was only ever meant to be opened a little less than halfway because there was nothing to stop the door from going this way. So once you got to the halfway point, the door would have tipped into the dirt. Then you would have to fight that to get it back on the tracks. So we're gonna fundamentally change this design, make it better, hopefully better. <laughs> okay, let's start on the door first. These are the old ball bearing rollers that were part of the old system. We gotta get those out of there so they don't interfere. For that job, oh, the old seven inch bower. Bauer Bees doesn't care about any of these rollers. We'll just tap the remaining bolt into there. Get it out of the way. Then we might do a stick of magnet in the end and pull them out. Okay, let's remove the remaining roller on the frame here. A lot of their welds weren't very good or didn't stick. That's a big problem. I mean, look at that. We're able to just pull that off by hand some kind of eggs or something there. It's weird. Here's the issue they had is that they somehow managed to miss most of the weld around the edge. Here's that bearing, bearing shot anyhow. The frame is bent that way where the door has been dragged off. I've been guilty of that as well. You can see my earlier videos where I dragged it off with a big truck. So let's go ahead and straighten out those pieces.
Okay, let's take a look at this. There's a rail in here. I want to reuse this. So let's fix that. Okay, the rails around the bomb shelter here on the sides are these, these little ledges, but they're actually pieces of angle iron. I'll show you underneath here. My plan is to take this roller. It's one and one eighth inch diameter, three quarter inch deep. So this roller here is gonna go under this edge right here. Well, when the door is past the halfway point closed, it's gonna try to drop down. So I need something to support it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld another piece of angle iron coming out like this, so the roller is supported on both sides. Looks like we got 97 inches out to do it. Perfect. Okay, let's go inside and cut a couple of spacers to hold the two pieces of angle iron apart, just the right amount for this roller. Now this roller is one and one eighth, so let's make the gap one and one quarter. Let's cut some spacers out of this. Want to be my lab partner? Feel how inaccurate that burr is. My damn grinder's so far out of balance, it more or less just smacks the burrs off than grinds them. Okay, we got all our spacers deburred.
We take our roller that we're going to use and we just check it, make sure it fits along this hole. Track. Now we just have this side left to do. So first thing I got to do is wire brush up under this ledge here. It's all gritty. Get all as much of that silver paint off as I can. Take a little break and walk through the garden. There's the dude. There's the wife hiding over here. What? What are you doing over here? Are you gardening? Get out of here. What are you doing? Get out of here. Are you gonna eat an orange? No. Dude, dude, are you gonna eat an orange? Huh? What's an orange? Let me show you this spider over here. It's called an, an orb weaving spider. It's still alive. So how it's wrapped up in this nest right here. Shit. Stop. Don't put, he said, he, still, he likes his little home. He stays there. I know where he is <laughs> on the plant. We, we understand each other. On the door, I noticed it's got a pretty severe dent right here. It looks like it may interfere with the operation. See the angle? It's going in too far.
It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a huge improvement. To support this end of the door, I want to mount these rollers here inside here like this. But we need to figure out where and how high for width and call it, actually call it 41 and a quarter. So is that 20 and 5 eighths? Sound about like the middle? Let's put it right there. Let's find out how far this gap is in the middle. It's 15 and a quarter. This side is an inch and a half. And then how wide are these? Three and a half about. So I think we've got all the relevant measurements. Our door is 43 inches wide. Let's go 21 and a half. So we've got our middle marked. Okay, from our middle, let's check our rails. Looks like about 15 and a half. Rails are three inches wide. Figure out how tall our rails are. One and three eighths. Let's put a bolt height on there. Two and a quarter. Let's talk about the bearings we're gonna be using to uh, support this door. So this is a gate roller. It's designed to roll on angle iron. Normally what you do is you bolt, you bolt an angle iron or an angle iron type track across your driveway. And then you'll have your gate roll on this box like this. And then you weld the gate to this little box. Side here you have a four inch wheel. And if we pull it out, we pull out the little core a little bit, you'll see that there's needle bearings rolling in here. It also comes equipped with a Zerk so you can grease it. And these have 800 pound capacity. Okay, here's the front end. These are called cam follower bearings. It's got a diameter of one and one eighth inch. And this measurement here is three quarters of an inch. And it's designed to roll on tracks or to follow a cam. Like an eccentric, you know, to follow a cam like this and trigger a piece of equipment. These are rated at 3,000 pounds dynamic, which means they're rated to carry 3,000 pounds on this shaft right here when they're bolted up. 3,000 pounds while moving. That is absolutely insane. And two of these are going on the front of the door, so these are going to be more than enough for the job. Let's see how high this wheel rides on this track. You're riding about the fat part of that screwdriver high, which is about 0.4 inches. So we'll just, we'll symbolize that with this little picture, just like that. You can see that, that at one inch, we got plenty of clearance. That looks really nice. Okay, we're gonna make the length of the rails the same length as these um, C-channels. So let's go here. Let's call this, uh, it's about eight foot. Okay, so we got our measurements labeled out for a rail.
Okay, our rails are tacked on, but we need to bolt them down through our little bolt holes. Oh, I love these things. 10, 12, 8, 12. Let's grab an impact. the wife over there doing something. Not. <coughs> I think I ate as much sawdust as nut there. bolt sticks above here a healthy amount see if we can't fix these two bolts right here ready that's pretty good Look like the closest here. 
don't look long enough. Oh, look at this old bolt. This is like a 3 8 This is a 3 8 16 as well. And here's 3 8 16 with a flange. It's like a built in washer slash lock washer. Those are just 3 8 16 studs. Okay, it turns out we've got everything we need right here. Okay, we need to prepare this area for our rollers, but there's still some weld boogers from the old ones. So let's clear it up real quick. Let's mount this box centered right in the bottom of that V. measure the height the door is going to sit above the rim so you're going to sit about half an inch off the rim okay so 9 16 is how far the middle the middle of this is from the bottom of that roller i mean the bottom of that rail so so that rail is two and a quarter let's take a look at this we've got a healthy dose of angle iron it's three inches by two inches by mighty thick, I'm guessing it's a quarter, it's a quarter. That means that our distance from here, let's say I want to bolt this to the C-channel, to the hole, should be about 11 sixteenths. Let's see if that's going to work. Because you see the problem we have here, it's got to fill it. So our hole is 7 sixteenths. So we got about half an inch right there. At half an inch, is just ending. So I think we lucked out. No 
Don't buy auto punches from Harbor Freight. They don't work. I don't think that's gonna work. Ain't gonna be enough room for the nut. All right, let's go back to the scrap pile. Son of a bitch. I think that's gonna work. I try to hold my breath when that motor oil smokes like that. Can't be good. Take the half inch bit, de chowdering, beginning. De chowdering complete. Grab some 3 8 washers, put them in here. So it looks like four washers ought to do it. We ought to be able to tighten that up. There it is. Okay, if we want to strengthen this bracket, we need to add a couple gussets. We take our piece we just cut off like that. Flip it around like this. Earl makes your uh, blade last a lot longer by making the steel soggy. I'm gonna have to transcribe it the other way. the heads, points of the heads to get anywhere near the fillet. We need room for this. Got our bolt pattern figured out. Let's go ahead and scribe that out on both plates.
Okay, let's install these rear rollers, but I want to center them. I want to make sure they're centered with the rails on the door. You can see that they've got space on either side. We can adjust that with some washers. Peak to peak is 27 and three quarters. Okay, I can see a little bit squirting out there. Okay, we got our rollers installed and all schmooed up. Don't worry about why the schmoo is green. I've been tested and I'm not sick. Okay, you guys, it's a big moment. We gotta put that door on that shelter. Watch out. The door is really heavy. <laughs> it's heavy as hell. Put it under that side there. Okay, that's not too bad. This is the part where I cut my assistant in half. <laughs> They're not. Are you, are you just gonna push it? I just want you to support this end as I back it up over here. No. Okay? Have you had any ghost activity since you start working on it? No. Maybe a little. Go ahead. That's good. One, two, three. Ready? Go ahead. That's good. That's good there. Okay, that's how far the door is on now. Let's mount our front rollers before it gets on too far. It gets all out of balance. Those rollers, as you can see, are trapped in between the top and bottom rail on both sides. This is the moment of truth. I should be able to release 
the jack without anything happening. So let's go ahead and try it. Ooh. Don't worry about that noise. It's completely normal. I've heard it before. <laughs> Crowbar out of the way. This thing is on its own wheels for the first time in years. Maybe ever, since I can't imagine that old system worked very well. All right, Kylie, why don't you give it a push? Keep your hands on top so they don't get pinched in any moving parts. Ooh. Is it hard to move? No. It's so easy a baby could do it. Even a baby could go in there, she says. <laughs> What do you think? Are you impressed? Yes, I'm very impressed. Is that the biggest bomb shelter you've ever ridden? Oh my God. See back there, those are our, our rear wheels rolling on those angle iron, keeping the back part centered, keeping the edges from rubbing. Just doing a good job. Here's our front wheels running our tracks. You can see that it could be adjusted a little bit further. See, we're off to one side. Let's turn off the light for a second. See what it looks like. Well, it looks like absolutely nothing. Except for a little beam of light around the edges. Hope it don't get stuck in here. Better take the ladder out. We don't want anybody getting out of there. And that closes the door on this chapter of the bomb shelter restoration.